Lately, I've been playing with the idea of using my desktop to get access to sensors and motors and servos and all that kind of stuff just from the desktop so I wouldn't have to write a bunch of code and download it or run platform IO, which is cool, or other stuff like that. And so uh, I did a couple of experiments with the MCP2221 port expander and CircuitPython and Blinka, and that let me control um, the pins on that. And if I had IC I2C devices on that, I'd be able to run the sensors and do that all. We basically plug in any of those uh, two or one wire, four wire communication kind of devices uh, and connect them up to my desktop or my laptop. It was really cool. Um, but it turns out I ended up with a couple other boards I wanted to play with. And one of them was this Trinket Neo Key. And the reality is that board's pretty limited. It's kind of cool because it's got some lights on it, but do I really want to write a driver on the board for it? Blah, blah, blah. And so I started looking around for a way to run code on a microcontroller to do sensors, to do buttons, to uh, do displays, do all that kind of stuff, motors uh, with moderate amount of control and run it all from Python on my desktop so that and the, the real beauty of that is I don't have to write two programs, right? The problem is if you're going to do a microcontroller and talk to it, you got to write two programs, one on the des desktop or server or the host, the Raspberry Pi, whatever you're going to do, and one down on the microcontroller itself. In some ways, a Raspberry Pi is good for that, but it's kind of got the same problems. And then somebody turned me on to this thing called Belay. And what Belay does is it lets you write Python programs on your desktop and then parts of those programs will execute actually remotely on the microcontroller. And it's it's really cool. I hate to admit it, because at first I was like, man, this thing's too hard for me to understand. Okay, so basically what happens is you run a Python program on your desktop, and in that Python program, you mark certain functions as belay tasks. And what happens is runtime, when that file's loaded, anything that's got the task on it will actually get downloaded to the Python library and an executor is created a remote proxy. We used to do this in Next Step. God, in the 90s, it was cool. You could take functions and shove them across the wire and then there would be this remote invoker. So this isn't quite as cool as that. It really, I mean, it's pretty cool, but it all goes across the REPL serial link um, is actually how it works. And, you know, maybe I should have put that plug in there. Anyway, the main point, uh, cause you could do web REPL with this too. Anyway, the main point is you have a Python program and you decorate the functions you want to be remote and it will push those functions across the wire. And that also means you can return values. Um, and then you can, when you run your code that calls that function, it actually calls an executor, I mean, exec executor, executor. Um, and it runs it remote and it gets the output back, right? So in this case here, I've got like six lines of code and two of them are gonna be remote calls, really cool. And then you basically, any libraries that need to be staged for those, uh, you can either do it manually or uh, the author of this belay thing added a little thing. You can create a directory full of extra libraries and set those libraries up to sync out to the board when it runs. That's pretty cool too. So I, I really like this. Let me show you a super simple example of this, right? So in this case, uh, this blinky thing, right? So we have a belay device and this is going to be on a port. In my case, it's Windows Machine COM4. Um, and then you can see here device setup. So this is like the device task. So device setup is going to run when you call it anything with device.setup runs in the global scope. So if you want a bunch of variables set up for other method functions to get access to, you just put them in this at device setup and you'll call it down here. And what will happen here is we're just going to create an LED on pin 25 for pin out, right? Um, and then there's another one here that's basically set LED. So we first call setup. And then in a loop here, we basically just call set LED true and false. Typical blink and light example, right? The big thing though is because this thing's flagged with that task, this thing actually, the LED code actually ends up down on the microcontroller. So every time you call set LED true or false, it actually calls down to the microcontroller and flips the light back and forth, right? So that was what I was talking about here. This would be like the set LED function that got pushed across the wire. And then as the code, or we had a setup which ran it in global scope. And then we had this loop that uh, would call this function over and over, which would just go across the wire and call it there. And so that's how that works. That's it. That's all there is to belay. Um, so I, I actually found it, um, so I, it weirded me out a little bit um, that I would mix the code that runs down on the MCU and the code that would run on the host. So I was like, man, 
Is there any other way to do this? And the author is really cool. So it turns out you can actually set it up where you can put code into classes, right? And the methods in that class will actually, you can tag them all. So you can mark them all as tasks. You can mark one of them as a setup. And the cool thing about that is when you instantiate that class, it will actually run the setup in the global scope down there to set up your variables and stuff. And then it will push everything in that file that's marked with a task down to the other end. And I really like that because then I can have a file with code that runs on the board and a file that runs on the PC. Well, they all really run on the PC, but when it loads that one for the board, it means that it all gets everything, all those tasks in there get shoved down, right? And so now I have code that looks exactly uh, like it is all local. And then I just have that file that is just Python code that runs on the other and it pushes it down there. And every time I make a change, I just rerun the program and I'm good to go. And so let me give you an example of that. So this one here, uh, there's a, an example, you can't see it probably if you're on a small screen, but basically example A, B, uh, it runs this way. And so I'm just gonna do multiple devices. So actually, if you look at the way this thing worked, right? I have this setup code here and this thing is actually set up, um, po pointed at different devices, right? So it turns out I can actually instantiate this twice with two different boards. And uh, those two instances will each talk to a different board. So that's super cool. It lets you take Python code that was going to get downloaded to the microcontroller and you can actually shove it out to a couple microcontrollers just by instantiating copies on different REPL ports. So this all you relies on the REPL, you tell it which port you're going to be attached to this entire, all the tasks in here get shoved down there. And when we execute the code, we're good to go. So this isn't too cool. I've got two RP 2040s plugged in here, one on COM4, one on COM11. And this thing's just going to use the internal temperature sensor between them. And it actually flips back and forth. It does one every half second. So the temperature on each one comes up every second, right? So if I run this, I hope this works. And there you can see, oh, it's more than a half second or shorter. So you can see there are those, two, I have two boards. And now that they're warmed up, they actually got kind of the same temperature. There's little subtle differences in there, but that's actually board one and board two, my Python program. And what did I do here, right? I'm on my PC, right? I'm on my PC and all I did was run the main multiple devices program and I gave it the two devices and let me see, I don't know if I can really show this code. So if, uh, let me try this. So, right, this is all there is to it. It turns out I have this my devices class, uh, which is the one that's gonna be tagged if it run down on the device. And so I knew one up pointed to one device, I knew one up pointed to the COM port on the other that actually instantiates those two classes, downloads a copy of that class to each board and then I can just loop through a regular Python code and talk to those as if they were local objects and it talks to the two boards. So I could actually have battling uh, boards. I could have like little servos beating each other. Well, that says more about me than the example, but you get the idea, right? So in this case here, uh, you know, basically we knew up two copies of it sitting on different ports and then we can talk to them both from here without having to do any work on the mic micro Python on the device. We just keep downloading the code while we're testing it to see what happens. And, um, you know, if you get really complicated, you may want to write some test code for that. But I think this is super cool because it means you can turn your, um, it means you can turn your uh, microcontroller into a peripheral, a smart peripheral and not, and uh, just run it that way and all the codes on your host, really cool. Try it, go out to the REPL site. I am an idiot. I don't know why I just said go to the REPL site. You go to the Belay site, right? So if you go out to GitHub and you look, oh, here we go. If you go out to GitHub and you look at the Belay site, this is all explained. It's super cool. Try it out.